Welcome to West Virginia and Commonplace. Today, I have a special guest with me all the way from the UK. Her name is Megan Stevens. And we always start the show off. Uh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm JR, the host of the show. I don't know why I always forget to do that. But uh, Megan is here. Megan, please tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Megan. I live in sunny England. It's not very sunny today. Um, I own a digital marketing agency called Social. We deal with kind of like the weird and wacky parts of the internet and parts of digital marketing. So my job is pretty obscure, maybe. Um, yeah, uh, just pretty much a summary of the business, a summary of me. I'm 24. Um yeah, I don't have much hobbies apart from my job. The business is still super new. Um, we're less than 12 months. Uh, so really, it's just my main priority at the, at the moment. <laughs> okay, so let me dig a little bit deeper into who you are. What uh, mm -hmm. inspired you to get into doing anything in social media? <laughs> um, so I used to work as a startup advisor. So people used to bring their startup companies to me and basically my whole job was to fix problems. Um, so they might come to me and say like, oh, I have X amount of money, here's the problem. And I just started noticing that more and more problems could be solved through digital marketing. And I found that the more digital marketing agencies I spoke to, the more like social media people I spoke to, the shitter they were, like they were crappy at their jobs. And it was hard to find anybody that could really go out and help start up businesses with little budgets. Um, like market in nice organic ways um, and so yeah I think that's where like the initial interest come from um, I sold all the stock and share that I had in all like companies and investments at the beginning of the pandemic to give myself time and leeway to figure out what it was that I really liked um, and I just found that I like sat on TikTok all day, Snapchat, YouTube and I was like wouldn't it be really cool if I got like paid to do this um, and that's when I decided to go like full time on my own digital marketing agency. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty, <laughs> pretty okay. straightforward story. Okay. So that's a good one there. Now let's, like, we're going to dig into the social media aspect. Uh, it was one aspect that we initially uh, jumped into about your favorite movie. We'll get into that in a little bit, but let's talk about this, this one thing in social media, the weird and wonderful side of social media. Can you explain that to the audience? Because let me give you this real quick, because social media to, to me, uh, it has a, a gray matter type area. It has a light matter. And then it just has a dark matter that we just don't talk about. So let us <laughs> enlighten us on the weird and wonderful side of social media. Yeah. So I guess the weird and wonderful is like twofold. It's one in the approach and two in the clients. Um, so for example, we have clients who are doing something that's like a real niche part of the internet. For example, like ASMR channels are a perfect example of this. We have a couple okay. of people who do ASMR. We do a marketing package specific to ASMR channels. Not a lot of marketing agencies even know what an ASMR channel is. Um, and obviously we like basically hunt down all the places on the internet that people interested in ASMR are and we market directly to them. So that's a prime example of like, it's a niche in the internet that somebody's already creating for that we've got to go target. The other side is it's clients who might have a problem doing your traditional like Facebook marketing. Uh, so a couple of really good examples of this is we have a washroom service provider. All they do is restock the disposable soaps and like toilet paper in bathrooms and take away waste. It's not a super glamorous like job or company. And so it's like, how do we create social media marketing for them that actually converts to clients? We do things more like LinkedIn. We do Reddit answering for them. We do more like chat forum services. Um, so we take a look at the internet as a whole and go, okay, where on the internet is this client's perfect customer? Um, and we really hone in on that. Um, so, yeah, I guess those are the two sides of it, basically. OK, and, and I like that because like what you just introduced there, um, you you made everyone feel comfortable with the Internet now because now people know that there is a place for you on the Internet because a place oh, that yeah. stocks soap. Yeah, most definitely. Now, yeah. um, advertising and promoting. These are things, and this is as content creators. I'm not not always specifically speaking to podcasters. I'm talking to content creators. What is the major difference between advertising and promoting? 
Well, I think for lots of people, it's just semantics, as in lots of people will use these words interchangeably, as in advertising might just be one person to one audience, whereas promoting might be a bigger size to a bigger audience. Um, I think I have the approach of like, don't get too caught up in it. Um, like I know so many people from content creator side and from business side and even from like digital marketing agency side you get so caught up in like learning all of the different like lingo and they're on courses and they like try to define every part of their package instead of like actually just doing it Um, and so yeah I guess I don't think I've really got like a solid answer as to what I think the difference between advertising and promoting are I think it's really just comes down to what is your end goal like is your end goal to uh, you know be a bit more casual about it or be a bit more you know intense about it if that makes sense that makes sense. So l- let's do a s- scenario real quick. You have a company. Um, your company is called Sochelle, mm-hmm. and that is S-O-C-H-E-L-L. How did this company become a reality? I want you to answer that one first. Then next, I want you to walk me through how someone is able to get in, in contact with you to actually schedule a meeting uh, to go over what type of products you offer. Yes, cool. So uh, the company is Sochelle, S-O-C-H-E-L-L-E. It's after my name, which is Michelle. Um, So it's pretty straightforward for most people to remember. Uh, How did we go about making it a reality? I guess uh, one day I woke up and I was like, cool, this is definitely what I want to do. I like had spent a couple of days maybe like reviewing my whole life and seeing if there was something that at every period of my life I like enjoyed doing. I think I come to the conclusion that it was probably social media. I had a couple of thousand Instagram followers already. Um, I liked to take pictures from my own personal Instagram and I liked to create content anyways. And that's mainly what I was doing even when I wasn't being paid for it. Um, So I woke up one day and I was like, cool, going to start a social media agency, um, digital marketing agency. Um, How do I do that? I made an official company. I made a social media post that said, hey, I'm starting a digital marketing agency. Would anybody be interested? I was booked back to back for calls from there onwards. We signed our first free clients in our first five days of being like an official registered business here in the UK. So it grew much quicker than I could have anticipated. Um, And so, yeah, we kind of just like grew from there. I feel like we're almost working backwards now, as in we have lots of very big clients with very big marketing packages. And we're actually now working on like um, free resources and that side of things. Um, And then I don't think I can. What was your next question? So that's how we grew as a company. (laughs) And and how does someone get in contact with you? And um, what I want you to be specific about, because here's the thing, like with what you're doing is amazing. Um, I'm on the content creator side and on the business side at the same time. Yeah. As a content creator, when someone, when I initially started, when I see someone like you come about, I, I'm ready to go in business because I want to take a hobby and turn it into something professional. So let's do yeah. that first. The content creator, how do they contact you? And what is certain expectations that they should have before they come to the table with you. Okay. So a few things. One, we keep it purposefully not super in your face marketed. It's not very easy to get in contact with me personally. That's completely on purpose to kind of like weed out people that we don't want to work with. And basically to make sure that I've got time in my schedule to be a human being and stay alive. Otherwise, I think we tried in the first maybe at the six month mark to like make it easily to do it publicly. And I was booked 17 hours a day for 12 days straight. So there's a reason that it's like hard to find me on the internet. And I I think I prefer it that way for now. Um, But if you go to my Instagram bio, there is a book a call section, which will give you a free hour of my time. Uh, The Instagram is Megan Stevens official. So that's Stevens S T E P H E N S. Um, official and there's a book a call section there or you can just email through uh, it's megan social at gmail.com uh, the expectation so we have let's say four criteria for every client thank it you it. it has to be 
interesting or something new to industry. I won't work with boring people. I won't work with boring projects. I won't work with something that's like a unique challenge that I feel like is uh, rewarding to myself or someone within my team. So if you're doing boring shit, I don't want anything to do with it. Go find someone else. Um, You have to be doing right by people and the planet. Um, So if I find out that you're treating your employees badly or you've got bad reviews somewhere or you're I don't know, mass producing oil or producing stuff that would be bad for the planet in the long run. I just can't get behind those kind of projects. And I'm not the person to talk to about it. You have to be doing something for the greater good of like humanity or the planet. I like to work with those kind of companies where their priority is actually making money so they can grow as a business rather than making money so they can have a a fourth yacht on the (laughs) on the Isle of (laughs) Sicily or whatever um and then I guess the final criteria is we like you to take us seriously so we like you to have a pretty big marketing budget um for non-profits and companies that are smaller we can work from about 500 pounds upwards per month Um, But that's because our big corporate clients play into a pay it forward scheme that subsidizes your fees. Um, So lots of our bigger clients pay it forward. We use that money to take on smaller clients and smaller businesses. So it's like a weird circular model. I don't know that it's that common. Um, So, yeah, but like the average content creator right now pays us about 2K and that's UK pounds. So 2000 Great British pounds per month. So it's it's not a cheap service. Um, and then the other thing that we do is like coaching, like one-to-one hours. If you can't afford us to manage everything, which I totally understand most people can't, um, we have a set amount of slots that are completely free each month. So I think right now we do 20 hours of free one-to-ones per month. They go pretty quickly at the beginning of the month and they're funded for our pay it forward scheme uh, and then they're 250 great british pounds from there onwards they usually last about two hours but we call them power hours um, <laughs> so, so yeah those are i guess those are the main options we are eventually working on like a course that you could buy or like free resources for our socials and that sort of thing you can always pop in the dms if it's a quick question um i try to not charge for everything because that would be really soul destroying from my end i think <laughs> but 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 i like the level of professionalism because uh one thing that happens and i don't know if it happens over there in the uk but here you have a lot of people that they mismatch uh, what they're promoting, like as a digital marketing agency, like mm-hmm. uh, for instance, you'll see a free course and it'll give you uh, grapes and oranges and then it'll give you four lemons. And then after those lemons, cause they always put the lemons at the end, you want to get more grapes and oranges. So you have to buy into it. And the way that you have it set up, you're, you're, you're Frank and you're upfront. Hey, this is what it costs to do this. You can get the free hour here and there because of the way that you model things. And, and I really appreciate that. Now let's get into some of this, um, marketing terminology the one term that gets misconstrued it's a three-letter word seo seo is a term that is thrown around um by everyone because everybody's worried about the google rankings and uh this and that and how to use it with wordpress so to to sum it up uh and to quick sections, because I don't want to give away all the information because then, you know, it doesn't put you out of business, but it makes business a little <laughs> bit harder because people have when you give people uh, when you give certain information like I do with certain things that we do with our consultant part of podcasting. If I give away certain stuff, people just take that and make that authority. And that's not all the well-rounded information. So SEO, please tell us what it means to you and what it should be used for initially, because I don't want to go into deep detail about it because they'll come to you and get the rest of that. But what should SEO, what is SEO and what should SEO initially uh, entail for anyone that's doing anything in digital arena? Yeah. Well, I guess it is pretty straightforward as in once you know that it means search engine optimization, the clue is in the name. It should be pretty straightforward to you. It's basically optimizing either like a website or even a social media profile to appear in searches as high as possible. Um, Yeah, search engine optimization has a lot of like shit in it. Like there are lots of people who think that they do this really well um, and they don't. (laughs) Um, So I think that that's where lots of people get get kind of caught up on it um for us 
the the first step is kind of saying like okay is it even worth us putting the energy and effort into a website seo package as in it depends really what keywords you're trying to rank for as to how much money that that's going to cost you um and also is it like reasonable within the budget of the client so if we can find search search engine terms that are low competition we will usually go ahead and do seo for a website um for our social medias and stuff like that we try to find like weird little loopholes um so a really good example of this actually um the word nutritionist i was speaking to a client the other day who was saying like oh it's so expensive to try and compete with other nutritionists like i can't rank in any of the keywords on socials and i can't rank in any of the like google searches and i said I reckon most people spell nutritionist wrong. Uh, And I double checked this and actually, yeah, quite a lot of people, at least here in the UK, spell nutritionist wrong. Um, And there was thousands of searches going through every month on nutritionist spelt wrong on Instagram and no nutritionist had spelt their name wrong, obviously. Um, And I was like, just spell your name wrong. Like literally just spell your name incorrectly. It's two things, right? Like one, you're going to benefit from traffic that nobody else is trying to compete on. Um, And for two, it's like a good icebreaker conversation starter. Um, And so, yeah, that's a prime example of like, we try to find the little loopholes that cost our clients basically nothing and drastically change uh, traffic for them. Uh, On the like website SEO side, it's a little bit harder because Google will obviously automatically correct your spelling. So it doesn't really matter if you put an incorrect search term in. Like, don't be spelling things wrong on your website, guys. That's like a terrible idea. Um, (laughs) But I I think uh, we have found things where it's like, okay, there's a similar search term or there's a long search term. And really, we try to focus on backlinking rather than on-page SEO. I always say like, on-page SEO is nice it's pretty it will convert people but the real traffic is generated through backlinks um, and that's actually what lots of seo agencies don't focus on um so yeah we try to explain to the client like the whole model of every website on the internet has a bit of authority and backlinking is just borrowing authority from other websites um so yeah that was pretty <laughs> pretty much the <laughs> overview of what we do with seo basically <laughs> Okay. And and I like that because like that gives uh, insight to people and it lets, like I said, anyone that wants to come do business with you know that, Hey, I can come to Megan and her group and we are going to get good SEO and we'll get help and we'll get taught one other major thing that we may not need SEO. Oh yeah. Like, Um, I think this is really important. Like when you run an agency to begin with, like maybe you want to take on every client because you're like so excited about it, but some people you genuinely can't help. Um, and it's, it's two things. It's like, you are not the right person to help them. As in like, SEO is not my speciality. My co- my partner actually runs a big SEO company. So if they ever come through and they're like a majorly big client, I'll automatically refer to him because his company is better at it. Um, and they can cater to much higher, um, more expensive packages. Um, but it's also the client might just have unrealistic expectations of it. Like SEO thrown around so much that people are like, oh, once I'm on the first page of Google, like I'll be a millionaire. It's fine. Like nobody, it, what is the the whole joke is like, oh, how do you, what's the SEO equivalent of a funeral being on the second page of Google or whatever. Um, but that's actually not true. And, and even this, we were talking about the other day, like um, not everybody uses Google. Like actually a large amount of search traffic goes through like Yahoo Bing still. Um, So it's, it's like most people sit there and say like, Oh, Google analytics, Google this, Google that. Um, But yeah, like even last year, Google searches were overtaken by TikTok searches. So maybe we're seeing more of a rise in, in social in that kind of way. Um, So yeah, I think it's like, it's become a very reductionist term. Like everybody thinks they know what SEO means. Um, but in reality, not a lot of people know what it, <laughs> what it actually means. <laughs> all, right, all right, Megan, we're going to play the social media game real quick. I'm going to give you a social media and um, what I what I need from you. Because like I said, whenever we do interviews and things like that, we don't want to, we never want to strip away from what you do, but just some questions about social media. All right. Um, 
But here's a quick story real quick. All right. Me personally, I found, and you told me where I went wrong with my story. Um, me personally, to build hashtags and different things for what I do on Instagram, I started off on Tumblr because Tumblr has different hashtags, different things there. So I, I go to Tumblr and we'll say it's a Monday or so. I'll work through what's going on there, see if my content relates to the hashtags that I'm looking for and see where they're what they're doing on Tumblr. So I'll get all those together, um, put them, act like I'm about to make a post and pull them all over, copy those to my notepad or, you know, I'm an Apple guy. So I just put it in my notes, go over to Instagram, whatever post I've made on Canva or whatever, post it, put those on there. So that's how I build the unique listeners. That's how I get my new listeners. So after I do that, um, I go back and I look at my analytics uh, from everything. I use TikTok for my behind the scenes stuff. So like where me and you were talking earlier, um, if we had been in agreement, I would have like filmed us with a camera behind me and right, cool. use that for backup or something like that. Yeah, so I, I do all my BTS um, or anything that's outside of the podcast that's related to it on TikTok because it generates a certain um, person for me there. Those people are people that will listen, but the attention span of TikTokers for me is not very long. So, so that's my TikTok. Instagram and Facebook are integrated. So I use something called business suite. So business suite takes care of how I plan out um, and what times the ads drop and different stuff like that. Cause I learned that at certain times people pay attention. Um, I, 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 and, and this may be wrong, but I found that in the whole world, in the United States, our Eastern time zone is the most watched time zone by everyone. So the time that I actually wake up in life at 6 a.m., which is uh, that would be five hours ahead of you, right? Or mm-hmm. behind you, or you're ahead of me five hours. So it'd be, yeah, I'm ahead of you. Yeah, so because at eight a.m. it's one o'clock, right? Yeah, so right now it's three, about to be three thirty here. So you should be able to tell. Yeah, so it's ten thirty here. So <laughs> yeah. ten thirty, my t- so but so the three hours before this time, like from seven a.m. to ten thirty. It's the most it's the most time that most people catch the social media in the United States, even or no matter where you are, or United States worldwide. So Eastern time in the United States is a time that I have to make sure I push everything out between 7 a.m. to one o'clock my time. After that, it's lost and defeated. Um, so that so I, I learned that. And that's how I get my universal people from across the, the world to listen to the show. So I know mm-hmm. how to tailor to that. So after I do that, um, the numbers they stay steady, but I plateaued. I plateaued because I didn't understand that you have to elevate more. You have to do more than your mold to get higher in what you're doing. So I moved over to to tick. I mean, to Snapchat, Snapchat is very limited, but it's a more intimate setting. So it got me more people that wanted to spend money with me. So Snapchat worked for me in the sense of it brought me in people that really wanted to have a deeper intimacy with me. So that worked there. Um, Twitter, on the other hand, backfired on me because Twitter with everything else that I was doing, I, I didn't have enough time to tweet as much as you should to keep that up. So Twitter, I still neglect to this day because it hasn't brought me anything in. So social media wise, let's start back at the very beginning. Facebook, what does that mean to you? And what should that mean to any type of client? Yeah, I mean, so lots of people have this opinion that Facebook is dead. And I definitely don't subscribe to that opinion. But I do think it's less effective than it used to be. And so I think the the real big thing with Facebook is get somebody who's up to date informed with what Facebook is doing. Uh, I think that's super important. Facebook groups are probably the most underutilized feature in the whole of Facebook for organic marketing, in my opinion. Um, a prime example, we literally set up this podcast in a Facebook group. Um, yes. So I, so I think like loads of people sleep on Facebook groups, especially as a marketing tool and especially as a like introducing your product or service to new potential markets tool. Um, and so, yeah, one of the first thing we do for like when uh, clients add us as a Facebook page admin is we'll go through and add them to like literally 200 different Facebook groups that we think we've got great potential in. The other thing that people people are uh, a little bit dumb with how they target on hashtags or how they target um, within or within marketing in general, as in like, say I run a gym, right? Yes. And I decided that the top 50 hashtags I'm going to use are like gym, gym bro, like fitness. All of the people in that hashtag already use a gym. Um, and so I'm not actually going to convert people new to a gym if that was my goal. What I actually want is like 
parenting groups or like parenting hashtags or like school run, that kind of thing, where actually people scrolling through those hashtags aren't already sitting in a gym looking for motivation. They might actually be looking to join a gym. It's more of your actual demographic. Um, And I think actually that's something that people really sleep on. They niche down into their own their own thing whereas the only traffic going through that are people who also own the same thing um so yeah I think that's super interesting and that's why we try to add them to Facebook groups that are like maybe their local city like public bulletin or like networking or all those kind of things as well um not just you know for example podcast podcast guest podcast host you know there are hundreds um (laughs) yeah I think I think and Facebook has great potential in the te- in the sense of like Facebook and Instagram basically the same strategy wise these days you can do a lot of the same posting and a lot of the same optimization against both so you're really just hitting two birds with one stone LinkedIn I I would say they're the main five right like Facebook Instagram Twitter LinkedIn and uh TikTok I would say are yes the, are the main five And I would say that really LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram are very, very similar. Um, It's it's only really TikTok and Twitter that have a real micro universe that you've got to be you've got to be in the universe to really understand how to market. it. Um, And I think that's why so many people have a problem doing their own marketing. They're just not on the platform. You can't market on a platform that you're not on all the time. Um, and that's why my screen time is like 15 hours a day. It's like, <laughs> uh, it's like insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so that's the summary of Facebook for you, I think. Okay. Cause, and I agree with that about LinkedIn because LinkedIn, um, for me personally, my business professionals and it, like someone like you, I would if I hadn't mentioned the Facebook group, I, at some point I, you would have came across in one of those uh, suggestions for the simple fact that any business model, that's where uh, in podcasting, at least I say that separates the hobbyists from people that want to be professional with it. Because when I don't see them with a LinkedIn page, I automatically just say, Hey, okay, have a good day. You know, not in a rude way, but just keep doing what you're doing. Have fun. Um, now let's talk about Twitter and 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 I'll tell you my story. I'm 36 years old. So I've been in an inception of everything. I was around when MySpace was the big thing. Um, I was one of the first people on Facebook because I had an EDU, um, you that. know, back then. So, <laughs> yeah, so like I'm like, I'm legacy, everything. So Twitter, for some reason, I have never grasped t- tweet, retweet or any of that to build on for the simple fact that I'm one of those grassroots. I can use Instagram. I use Tumblr for certain things and the, the rise of TikTok and then Snapchat for what it's based on regional wise and, or just in the United States, you know, I can use these things and and get very far. What does someone need to know about Twitter and what is the benefit of Twitter to anyone that's, that's doing business with you? Okay. So a couple of things with Twitter. Um, We recently tested this and I'm, almost certain that this is like a no matter which country you're in this is a thing um you need a thousand tweets before you can even unlock the full potential of twitter so the first priority for anybody who doesn't have a well-established twitter account is just to be tweeting constantly because until you hit that thousand tweets twitter doesn't think that you're serious about staying on the platform they won't promote you as far as they can Uh, and we've seen this with like lots of different accounts we've tested it probably hundreds of times now. So I'm pretty sure that that is the case. And I'm pretty sure for most of our clients, we've got to sit there and tweet five times a day for a prolonged period of time before they really start seeing uh, good organic traffic coming through, uh, unless they're in like a really specific niche that we can we can retarget in a way. Um, Twitter is really, really great for B2B, actually really slept on in terms of connecting with other business people, especially content creators. Um, It tends to be people's primary platform, um, especially like blog writers and that sort of thing. It's just more naturally where they tend to fall. Uh, I think you could say this about like every platform. The reason that we do multi-platform approach instead of just setting up our clients on one platform and saying like, cool, we're just going to focus on Facebook for you. We're just going to build a Facebook page is because you miss out on a chunk of your audience by not being on it. That, Like Twitter is somebody's primary social media. Somebody spends 
more time on Twitter than they spend anywhere else. And so by you not being on Twitter, you miss the people whose primary platform is Twitter. Um, And so, yeah, I think it's underappreciated. Twitter ads, I actually think are really insanely good at the moment um, because they're underutilized, undersaturated. They're kind of cheap per impressions in comparison to Facebook and Instagram ads anyway. Um, And so I think you also have great promotional, like pushing options on Twitter. Um, They're not quite as good as what Snapchat is right now, um, but they are a little bit better in terms of targeting and a little bit better in terms of conversions in my experience. Now, obviously, bear in mind who my like average client is. Um, Yeah, I also think that Twitter is insanely good if you want to stay ahead of the curve. Like if you're at all interested in like Web 3.0 stuff, NFT projects, uh, metaverse, that kind of side of things, Twitter is the place to be to keep a tabs on all of that. Um, I know that we've used it for like a, a ton of our like new marketing sort of stuff, like new things that we want to try and offer. The only way that we were even aware that we could do some of these things was through Twitter. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess that's the general advice on Twitter. Um, go really intense on it until you hit those thousand tweets and then uh, see where you naturally fall, I would say, um, because it's really a community. It's really like a back and forth, constant conversation. Um, and as much as much as you would benefit from just making posts on Twitter, you really get the benefit when you're like replying to people's tweets and replying to people's comments on Twitter. You build a real community on Twitter. Okay, I'll definitely have to uh, dig into that because yeah, I need to get my Twitter game up. Right? <laughs> yeah, like I'm sitting back here, I'm like, man, I'm like, maybe I'll take all 181 episodes. I won't do tweets. I have to figure a way to automate it because I'm one of those people I use automation. Like I can't, I don't spend time on social media like that. Anything that's on Instagram, I haven't checked Instagram in a week. Um, yes. But anyway, um, so tying up everything real fast. Um, there was a reason that we connected, and um, we were. It was real simple. It was a, a question, and we didn't. This interview turned into something else outside of that question. <laughs> I asked you about your favorite movie and how it inspired you in life and how do you carry it in your business? So can I get you to answer that question? And and let me do this real quick for the audience. Um, I had made a post on Facebook um, looking to bring people in for my next season. And you answered the one question that nobody else answered. The one about their favorite movie. I think I said two slots for someone for a favorite movie and look what the interviews turned into. So could you tell us about (laughs) your favorite movie real fast and how does it carry over into your business? Yeah. So one thing that was really great that you did that because you stood out in the like shit ton of posts that were on that specific group that day. Uh, And it's an easy question. Like everybody has a a favorite movie. My favorite movie is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the 2005 version. I think it has like an insanely good cast. It's, It's not like any other film. And I think that's something that I really carried with me in the sense of like, it's completely unique and completely different. And it also just teaches you like the things that you worry about, like tomorrow the world could just explode and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Like often the things that you are most concerned about are like so trivial in the grand scheme of like the greater picture and everything like that. I think it really stuck with me. I also am just like a real big movie buff. I like go to the cinema like twice a week at the moment. Um, (laughs) I I love a movie um, and I especially love movies that I can like deep dive into the universe with and I think Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is like a perfect example of that you've got like the radio series you've got the old movies you've got like um the books and like the audio like I've just listened to the audio books read by somebody else to what I listened to the original audio books in um so I think there's like a wealth of uh content around it that you can kind of like deep dive into and I really love that with like storytelling I really love being able to like fully explore a fictional universe, Lord of the Rings, perfect example of that kind of thing. So, yeah. Okay. Something in, in something that's uh, <laughs> timeless. So um, real quick, Megan, got to put you on the spotlight here. Um, in America, we have these things called billboards. People put their advertisements up on those and that's how they express yeah. themselves. And that's how that's the, I call, I call advertising a one way communication. That's how you one way communicate with me. Cause once it comes to me, I take it and I go somewhere else with it. So if there was a billboard for social, so shall, let me pronounce it properly. Uh, what would that bill? What would that billboard say? And and here's a major question we didn't touch on. 
Um, once you have that billboard up, we were using that, just role playing with that. Um, what would be the next venture for you? Would it be the United States or what's your next big venture afterwards? Yeah. So um, we do think about this often in terms of like, basically my company does no marketing. We just haven't had time to really focus on ourselves. We're so focused on the clients that we don't really ever bother promoting social that much. It's grown so organically and through word of mouth. And that's the way I like it for the time being. But eventually, in order to scale up the business, we will inevitably have to do things like our own social media marketing or our own um, billboards, that sort of thing. Uh, I think we've just done a super cool campaign that I almost wanted to steal from the client when we did it to them. Uh, So we we like left these business cards all over like London. um, And it said like, join the community and it basically had loads of like icons on it to make it look like a secret community uh and the qr code took you through to the client's website and it turned oh, out wow. they, did, they did like you know roller skating classes or whatever and i thought that was just like a really cool way to get people like on the page and so i always think that we would do something super vague like something that didn't even really promote our services something that was like join a cult and just like a qr code Uh, And when they get through the website, just keep an eye on what they're doing and sort of optimize from there. Uh, I'm always like just trying to get people over the first hurdle. And so, yeah, I think a billboard. And we would love to do something like, um, I don't know if you know the search engine ecology here in the UK. It's pretty big. Um, They just did a carbon neutral billboard made from like uh, netting that was like moss so it uh, absorbs the carbon from the air whilst also being an advert for like a really sustainable company and I'm always very for like trying to keep us as carbon neutral as possible um, so yeah I think we would also probably do something that was like at least have plants on it or, <laughs> or something to offset the the printing costs um, in terms of our next ventures uh, so right now we deal with clients in every time zone almost every time zone in the world. So we have uh, a client uh, internationally, everywhere that I've aimed to have a client internationally. We deal with people in America, in a couple of different states actually now. Um, And so the next process for me is like, we want to set up something like a VC fund or something like a, a, a non-profit side of the business that would help um, smaller companies who are doing good by people on the planet um, have funding to set up, you know, companies or mission projects or that side of things. Um, and we're currently working towards our like B corporation and that side of things to show that we're like an accredited ethical business. Um, basically, we have a pay structure that means that like I'm the CEO and I'm paid as much as like the intern in Thailand. We're all paid the same. And so the more money the company earns, the better all of our lives get. And the more we can do for clients and the more we can do for the planet and the more we can do for people. Um, And that like, that's what really gets me out of bed. Like, (laughs) uh, I would love to say that I was a money driven person. I would probably be very, very rich by now if I was. Um, But realistically, the money doesn't make me happy. And and it's really about making sure that the clients get something that that helps their business and helps, you know, people. (laughs) Okay. And, and I thank you, Megan Stevens, for your time and coming on and, and, and doing all this with me. Thank you so much for having you, me. You've enlightened the world. And um, once again, we do this thing called the shameless plug at the very end of the show. Please tell everybody real quick where they can meet you, where they or where they can meet your company, where they can get involved with you guys and you guys can help their their company become the the next greatest thing we never want to be the next big thing because the big next big thing always falls but the next greatest <laughs> thing um inside the digital social media and digital marketing community as a whole um so if you could plug those things real quick i greatly appreciate that yeah it's pretty straightforward so for me it would be great to see you all on my personal instagram megan stevens official and the same over on my linkedin if you click the bio there you actually help plant some trees and you'll also see all of the links we have affiliate links to uh, some of the partners that we have. Uh, we also have every way that you could contact us, every place on the internet we are. We run a TikTok channel called Weird Marketing. Um, so it would be cool to see some of you guys over there. We do live streams once a week and we do pretty regular videos. Um, 
I think that's it. Again, we don't do much in terms of promotion. Um, it was just really <laughs> cool to speak to you. I've been binge watching your like podcast for the last week. I always try to like really take a listen at um at a who I'm talking to and stuff like that. And I think you're doing really cool stuff. So best of luck to you. It was really awesome to meet a stranger on the internet and end up with like a cool half an hour conversation. You made my day. All right. Thank you very much. And <laughs> once again, everybody, you can catch us at... Uh, and I'm not going to do the www because everybody knows that. Uh, West, <laughs> WVUncommonplace.com. Um, join our, our mailing list. Uh, you'll get inside stuff. And then, you know, we also have uh, the premium uh, premium service where you will actually be able to catch this podcast in seven days. And then outside of that, then it will go to a mass market release. And then um, and the ensuing advertisements and all that other stuff will be up on all social media platforms. When it hits Tumblr, make sure you guys move it across Tumblr for us. That'll be greatly appreciated. And once again, it's me, JR, the host of West Virginia and Commonplace, along with Megan Stevens, the owner of Social. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, we're signing off. <laughs>